Hello, welcome from Christ Family Foursquare Church in LaSalle, Illinois. Uh, you joining with us are part of our family, Christ Family, and uh, we're glad you're you're joining with us. Um, I'm glad to be back here uh, preaching and uh, exciting news that we're going to be um, going back in-house in the sanctuary next week, December 6th. Um, starting that week, we'll, we'll have service, um, regular time, you know, here at 10 o'clock and then also at, um, start our Tuesday prayer group again and our Wednesday grounds for living and, uh, our clothing center will be open again on Mondays. So, uh, hopefully you can join us if you're local and, um, I want to thank everybody and my wife and my family, um, my boys want to thank everyone for um, all the prayers, the cards, the the food, the grocery drop-offs, the love, all that so many ha did for us. Um, my wife and I got really sick. Um, I was in the hospital for five nights, and uh, God got me through, and um, we were just so appreciative of all the love and the prayers and the support and everything that you guys have done. Uh, you know, being in the hospital, especially isolated, couldn't have family or friends or anything like that. Um, you know, it, it just really, uh, it was just me and the Lord. Um, and to be honest, it was life changing. I wouldn't trade it for anything because, um, you know, I just took my Bible app and I played it and let read the word to me uh, about 80% of the time there. And I spent time in prayer and, and worship and um, God was, was there. And I know that your, your prayers were there with me. And um, I really appreciate that. And I just, you know, I'm so grateful for uh, family, for natural family. It's a blessing from God, but the spiritual family uh, as believers in Christ Jesus, we're adopted into God's family. We become brothers and sisters in Christ. And, um, you know, it's, it was been, it was such a blessing just knowing I could just feel your prayers. I could feel your love. And, uh, it just really helped me through it all. So I just, again, just how grateful I am, uh, just encourage us all just to remember, love God and love people. That's what it comes down to. And, uh, and God is, is, is pleased with that. Um, I am thankful and grateful for the, the wonderful nurses and CNAs and doctors I had at, uh, St. Margaret's, uh, they all did an amazing job. Um, I was able to, to witness that to most of them about Jesus Christ. And, uh, I prayed with all of them. Uh, none of them denied, uh, my request to pray for them. And, uh, we, we need to remember to be rivers, you know, like, I'm receiving all your prayers, you know, for my healing and, and help. And I can't just hold that in because if we hold in the blessings from God, then we become a marsh where a marsh just receives, but it doesn't have an outlet to give out. And then it just becomes yucky. Our souls and our spirit become all yucky inside, just like a marsh. But if we rivers where we receive from God and the blessings and from others, and then we give that back out then it's like a fresh, fresh river flowing through, bringing forth life. And that's what we need to remember, you know, in our lives is, is to be rivers, to take the blessings that we have and then give it back out uh, to others. And uh, Jesus even tells us in Matthew 5, verse 14, it says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a, a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. And let's remember to be the light of the world. Right now, the world is in a lot of darkness, and, and there's you know, we as having the gospel, the, the truth of Jesus Christ, the word of God, we need to shine that light out everywhere we go and just be a witness and be an example and just share the love and the truth of God. So I encourage you to do that. Well, this morning we're going to be looking 
in uh, Luke chapter 17. So as you turn there, um, Luke chapter 17, starting verse 5 through 10, uh, I'm just going to say a little prayer for, for this morning's message, and I just hope that you are blessed. And again, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all that you've done um, for me and my family. We are very, very grateful. God, we thank you for your goodness and your love and your grace and mercy. We ask that you would just be with each one of us, Lord God, right now, listening, God, and that you would speak to our hearts, open our hearts, and just reveal through your Holy Spirit and through your word, Lord, the truth. And Lord, help us to, to walk in it and to live it and to believe it and to tell others about it. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, in Luke chapter 17, starting in verse 5, it says, The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. Jesus replied, Well, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you had a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. And he says to the servant when he comes in from the field, Come along now, sit down to eat. Would he not rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. So at the beginning of this, the apostles said to Jesus, increase our faith. You know, and it's not the quantity of faith, but it's the genuineness of our faith. And I wanted to read these little excerpts from my Bible notes because um, it encouraged me and I hope it encourages you. And it's regarding all this passage that we just read right now. And it says, Jesus didn't directly answer their question because the amount of faith is not as important as its genuineness. What is faith? It is total dependence on God and a willingness to do his will. It is complete and humble obedience to God's will, readiness to do whatever he calls us to do. The amount of faith isn't as important as the right kind of faith, faith in our all-powerful God. A mustard seed is small, but it is alive and growing. Like a tiny seed, a small amount of genuine faith in God will take root and grow. Almost invisible at first, it will begin to spread, first under the ground and then visibly. We don't need more faith. A tiny seed of faith is enough if it is alive and growing. If we have obeyed God, we have only done our duty, and we should regard it as a privilege. Do you sometimes feel you deserve um, extra credit for serving God? Remember, obedience is not something extra we do it is our duty. You know, and I, I wondered why Jesus had, you know, given this parable after that mustard seed faith. Because that mustard seed faith is like, you know, in my mind is that, okay, this, this great miracle, right? We're believing in faith for, for a big miracle. But Jesus, yes, says, yeah, there's big miracles. Taking a mulberry tree and uprooting it, you know, that that's a big, huge thing, right? But that's, that's, not everything is part of the, the life. You know, he goes on to this parable and he just talks about the daily obedience to God, the daily serving God. Because big miracles are only a small part of life. Let me say that again. Big miracles are only a small part of life. We need faith for them, but more importantly, we need faith for the daily grind of life right? It, it's it's the daily getting up in the morning, right? You're, you're tired and whatever. You got a lot to do today and you got a lot of things you got to do. It's that faith getting us through the daily grind, moment by moment, step by step, you know, day by day, week by week, just getting through the daily grind of life. We need to be trusting God for the little things, walking in humility and obedience to him. You know, in this parable, it almost seems like, oh, God may be like big headed or, or selfish, like, hey, come wait on me and, and serve me. But that's not it at all. We know that. We know God's character. 
God is very humble. And but God wants to keep us from falling. Because when we get pride in our life, when we make it about us and become selfish and and saying, God, you know what, we, you know, we're doing all this stuff for you. Bless us, God. We have the right, you know, God, we have all this stuff. No, we need to come as as the one saying, hey, God, we're unworthy servants. We've only done our duty. We're only here to, to serve you, to build your kingdom, to lift you up, Lord God. And we're just a part in this process. And so it keeps us from, from that pride. And because when pride comes in or selfishness, it we just get a spiral and go down fast in our lives. But God wants to keep us from that by saying, God, no, my life is yours. I'm, I'm your slave. I'm, you know, we think of a negative connotation as a slave, but in God's kingdom, we actually have freedom of being God's slave. But we have to come with that attitude of saying, God, my life is yours. You bought me with the blood of Jesus. And so I'm going to walk by faith, trusting um, my life into your hands, that you are my master, Jesus Christ. And if we do that, you know, there is blessings that come with that. Let's look over in, in Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 and starting in verse 37. It says, for in just a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay, but my righteous one will live by faith. And if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believe and are saved. Make no mistake, Christ Jesus is coming back one day. You know, the Bible tells us it's going to happen and it's going to happen. And so we need to, to have that mindset that we need to be walking by faith daily, that we need to be trusting God in, in every area and aspect of our life. He says, hey, don't be like ones that shrink back. Don't start out in faith and believing in God and being gung-ho and then all the worries and pressures and the things of life that come in and then don't let doubts come in. Don't let fears come in. Don't let, you know, um, hey, God's left you. God doesn't care about you. Why would a loving God allow this to happen in your life? You know, don't allow any of that stuff to happen. You build your faith back up and say, no, 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 no. God is still with me. God said he never leave me nor forsake me. God said that he works all to, uh, things all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And you build your faith on the word of God and the character of God. And you stand firm in that. And it's a daily walk. It's a daily walk of just saying, nope, this is who God is. I'm going to trust and I'm going to believe and put my faith in him. And Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And that's, you know, in my mind, I always pictured like the miracles, right? The big things that we need to have faith for those, for the, for the healings and, and, and the miraculous provision and, you know, all that stuff. And yes, that's part of it. But really what he's talking about is just that believing day by day, step by step, knowing who God is and standing firm in that. You know, having your faith strengthen every day to say, you know what? Life might seem like it's going crazy right now, but God is still constant. God is still on the throne. And when God says something, it happens. When God does something, it happens. His purpose will stand. His His purpose in your life will stand if you're willing to, to be that humble servant and say, God, I'm, I'm willing to serve you no matter what. I'm willing to put my faith in you even when times are terrible. And I'm going to trust you to get me through every day, every moment, every step. And so we take that walk of faith, trusting in the Almighty God. And that's, that's putting faith in his word because his promises are true. They are yes in Christ. And so all the good promises of God. You know, being in the hospital, I'm like, Lord, you know what? By your stripes, I'm healed. You know, you are my healer. I'm trusting in that. I'm believing in that. You know, didn't come instantly, but it came. And it came powerfully. And uh, again, thank you for the prayers. But, but we hold on 
to whatever you're going through, you take the word of God and you hold on to that and say, God, you're with me through this dark valley. You are my light. You are my salvation. You are my hope. You're my deliverer. What, whatever it is that you're going through or will go through, you hold on to the word of God and you walk in faith in that and you trust in that. And it's through the little things and the big things. You know, God cares about the little things in your life. He cares about every situation in your life. The littlest things that you care about and, and things that are going on in your life, God is there with you. Don't think that God, you just go to God when, when the big stuff happens. No, you go to him 24-7. You go to him with your life and say, God, the little things, the big things, the practical, the spiritual, everything in between, God, it's, it's you that I'm going to walk in. And everything that I do is to bring you glory and honor and praise through all of it through all of it, and even the good and the bad times. You know, think when things are good, it's easy, right, to, to walk and be strong and have faith, and yeah, things are great. God is good. Woohoo! Praise Him. But it's when you're in the dark valleys, when you're facing death, when you're facing the enemy in your face, and you just can't break free, that's when your faith needs to really rise up. And say, no, 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 no. I'm putting my trust in my God and his word. I'm believing in his Holy Spirit. God, I thank you for your angels. God, I thank you for your victory. God, I am believing and trusting in you. And it's those times that our faith gets solidified and, and makes us even stronger. And God is with us through it all. It goes on in chapter 11 and says, This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith he still speaks even though he is dead. We're going to go back to, to Cain and Abel in a little bit. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. Enoch was in the Old Testament. He lived a life that pleased God and he was taken. Like God just, just took him. He didn't die. He just took him into heaven, right? That was a sign for us as, as believers in the New Testament church, that Jesus Christ, there's going to be a rapture, that the, the children of God are going to be raptured. They're going to be taken up from this earth. And if that happens and you're still left on this earth, uh, the media and, and the politicians are, are going to come up with, you know, aliens abducted us or, you know, some kind of all kinds of theories of why all these people have left the earth instantaneously, right? Well, I just want you to know, if you are still left on this earth, get a hold of a Bible and start praying and reading and repenting and calling upon Jesus Christ because there'll still be a hope and a chance for you uh, to, to make it to heaven. Um, but just remember that you have to do it God's way because... It says that Enoch was taken because he pleased God. Well, how did he please God? And how do us today please God? It tells us in verse 6. It says, And without faith is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. It's, it's that living that life of faith, right? It's, it's by believing that God is real and he is who he says he is in the word of God, that he's true and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. See, I can't earnestly seek God for you and you can't earnestly seek God for me. Each individual has to say, God, I believe you real. I believe your word is real. I believe your son, Jesus Christ is real. I'm going to seek you today. And that's, that's what we have to do is every day is earnestly seek him, right? That's a continual, that's a hunger, that's a desire. God created you for relationship. And if you're just living your life every day and just God is just kind of an afterthought every day, then I encourage you, make God the number one in your life. 
Make God that every day you're waking up with just a song in your heart of praising God, thanking God, surrendering to God, saying, God, my life is yours. All throughout the day, spend time with him. Pray, read his word, get, get in, listen to him. Just, just take that time to say, God, I believe you're real. And I'm going to earnestly seek you with all that I have. And I guarantee you, you do that every day. Your life will be changed for the better. And in um, verse 13, it says, All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that um, they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. These people, the people were living by faith when they died. They never took their eyes off of God. They were believing, hoping, trusting, obeying, following, surrendering, living for him, knowing that their true home is eternity with Jesus. And that's an encouragement for us. You know, when I was in the hospital, I had a, a dear friend that went in the hospital a, as well, um, not locally, but in another state. And I was messengering back with, with, with his wife and, um, you know, we were praying for one another. And you know what? I made it out of the hospital, but he didn't. He went home to be with the Lord. He lived a life of faith and he's in heaven with Jesus right now. He didn't waver in his faith even unto death. And the family, of course, they're grieving, but their hope is in Jesus. They're like, we're going to see him again one day. It's going to be okay. We're going to see him again one day. And that's, guys, we start out in faith, but don't fall away from faith. Walk to the end. Every day saying, I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you're going to get me through it. I believe you have a heavenly home for me. This world isn't it. This world is going to be done away with. But you have a heavenly home for me that I'm going to live internally. Have that hope. Have that confidence. Have that faith that God is with you through it all. Let's look at um, that story of Cain and Abel because it's very important. It's very important. And, and, and um, God was just showing me this in, in the hospital. And I, I hope it ministers to you as it, as it did to me. Because it's, it's life-changing if we put it into action. So in Genesis chapter 4, um, verses 1 through 12, it says... Adam lay with his wife Eve. Adam and Eve were the first man and woman that God had created, okay? And she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I had brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to her, his brother Abel. Now, Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord, but Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor, favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, you will be accepted. But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, hey, let's go to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, um, uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, and then it says, then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, what have you done? 
Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opens its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Okay, so what happened here? Cain presented his best to God. Okay, he worked the soil, right? So he had to work hard, right? He had to plow the ground. He had to get some manure in there. He had to get the seeds in there and put them at the proper place. He had to um, make sure the uh, the ground was was good and, and the right um, um, depth of planting the seeds. He had to make sure it got watered, he had to get the, the bugs off the plants. He had to make sure the, the sun got it. You know, he had to work and he presented his best unto God, but God wasn't pleased with his best. Abel presented a sacrifice. Okay, and what does that mean for us? Well, today it tells us in Romans chapter 12, it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. See, God doesn't need your best. God God created you. He gave you your gifts, your talents, your abilities. He's God. He's all sufficient. He's all powerful. God can use a donkey. He doesn't need to use me, right? He doesn't need any of us. He doesn't need our best. And what we do a lot of times is we are presenting God our best. We're running around trying to please God, trying to do what's right, trying to, you know, we're, we're serving at the church. We're, we're serving at the local nonprofit organization. Uh, somebody's in need. We got to go help them right away. We're, we're, we're trying to, to read his word. We're, we're trying to pray. We're trying to be good Christians. We're trying our best. And God's saying, I'm, that's not what I'm asking for. Remember Mary and Martha, where Martha was serving and she's doing her best and serving others. And God, Jesus said to her, Martha, Martha, you're worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. And Mary, her sister, has chosen what is better. You know what Mary did? She sat at Jesus' feet and just listened. Here's the difference. Mary chose sacrifice. Martha chose to give her best. God is not asking for your best. He doesn't need it. He's asking for your sacrifice. He's asking for you to lay your life on the altar every day and say, God, my life is yours. I surrender it to you. Because if I do my best, then it's like this much. (laughs) But if I give my life as a living sacrifice and say, God, not my will, but your will be done, God, burn up everything that you're not pleased with in me. Direct me and guide me and lead me to what you want me to do today. And I surrender all that to God. Then God takes my life and says, okay, I have a surrendered soul. I can do what I want to do through it. And so when we sacrifice ourselves, we're saying, God, we're not giving you our best. We're just giving you our all. The good, the bad, the ugly, everything we lay it at your feet. And what we need to do is walk in obedience to God. We take the time every day. If you're not doing this, this is so important, guys. If you're not doing this, start today. Take the time today to get in God's presence and listen. Listen. Say, God, what do you want me to do today? What do you want me to do today? See, the Holy Spirit might speak to you something totally different than what you think. Oh, but God, there's somebody who has a need, and I'm the perfect one to meet that need. And God may say, no, (laughs) no, I don't want you to do that. But God, this needs to be done. And God, this needs to be done. God, God may say, no, no. You need to listen to what God is saying and be obedient 
to what he's telling you to do that day. And that's when you come and you give your life as a sacrifice instead of giving your best to God. You're surrendering to his will and not your will. As we walk in obedience, we surrender to to his will in our life. And that's not easy to do. Remember Jesus? Even Jesus was saying, God, if there's any other way than going to the cross, please provide it. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And that's part of our sacrifice as we're saying, God, what is your will for my life? I'm doing X, Y, and Z, but is this even what you want me to be doing? And we need to come before God and lay our life every day at his feet and say, God, what is it you want today for me to do? And then we just act in obedience to that. And if you say, well, pastor, I'm not hearing God. I'm not. I guarantee you, if you go every day and ask God to speak to you and wait quietly and listen, God will begin to speak to you and it'll become more and more and more clear. You just have to take the time to do it. But we surrender our life to his will so that his will will be done. Then we need to trust. We need to trust that God knows what's best. Even if he tells you to do something that makes no sense, you trust in the all-powerful, almighty, all-loving God that he knows what's best and he's going to work out what's best. And we need to be humble. We need to say, God, it's not about me. It's about you. I didn't create you. You created me. So I am your servant. I am your slave. You are my master. God, I am an unworthy servant just doing what you want me to do today. What is it you want me to do? And we humble ourselves. And then we die to all so that he may breathe new life in all. When you're on that sacrifice, when every day you come to him and just say, God, everything is yours. I lay it at the altar. Burn up everything you want. And Lord God, just take my life and do what you want. That's when God, there's a difference between the Cain and the Abel, right? Cain was giving his best, but our best will never be good enough for God. God wants the sacrifice. He wants you to surrender all. He wants you to die every day and say, God, take my life. So then God takes what we've given. It's not much because we don't have much to offer but he breathes life into it. And then he says, okay, brother or sister, or, you know, whoever, whatever your name is, fill in the blank. He's like, okay, this is what we're going to do today. This is what I want you to do today. And when we walk in that obedience, then God does miracles. God does amazing things in and through your life. But it takes us not giving our best. It takes us giving our all and saying, God, use me whatever you want. All that I have and all that I am is yours. Lord, let me be a living sacrifice to you. And then he comes in and his resurrection life comes in and does miracles in and through your life. And so I encourage you, choose to walk a life of faith daily. In the little things, the big things, the practical, the spiritual, the hard times, uh, the, the easy times, everything. Choose to walk that life of faith, trusting in your God, obeying your God, and then living your life as a, a daily sacrifice. Being like Abel and not like Cain. Not giving your best, but just giving your all and saying, God, it's not about me, it's you. Take it and do what you want. And God will do amazing things in and through your life. God bless your people. Encourage them. Strengthen them. Let them walk by faith. And let them walk as a living sacrifice daily. And let your will be done always. And you get the glory, honor, and praise. Because we are unworthy servants just doing our duty. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, I hope you're blessed. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm excited to see everyone next week. And, um, you know, those just online continue to, uh, to come online. And, um, you know, uh, next week we'll have, it won't be right at 10 o'clock because we'll have our worship and stuff, but we'll, we'll be on a little bit later. But uh, God bless you all. Thank you again for all your prayers and love and support and all that you done for me and my family. We're feeling so much better. And God is so good. He is our healer. He's our savior. He's our everything. So God bless you all and hope you have an amazing day in Christ Jesus.